The John Morris Show, episode 96. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash John. Morris show. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Hey, everybody, welcome back to The John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. This episode, I want to answer a question that I've been getting a lot lately, and I think maybe have a different answer than probably a lot of other developers might give you, and something that I think mentally and maybe even emotionally, can free you up a little bit to really get aggressive with your career. So the question that I've been getting, and it kind of takes different forms, but it's, the gist of it is, can I get clients if I only know XYZ languages? So it could be if I only know HTML and CSS, or if I only know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or if I only know JavaScript, or if I only know PHP and MySQL, or if I'm only a front-end developer, or if I'm only a back-end developer. Right, so it... It comes in all those different versions, but it's really this idea of if I only know this small subset of everything I could know, can I still get clients? Can I still take on clients? And so, again, I think my answer to this is probably a little bit different than you would get from a lot of other developers. Now, my experience of this, uh, let me just relay my experience of this. So I, I always have to hold myself back a bit because I know when I'm talking to these people, I'll lose them. But this kind of thing is just in my DNA. I think it's in your DNA too. And oftentimes can be why we have some difficulty doing this. So this actually happened to me just the other day. I was at one of the local business meetup groups that I belong to. And I was approached again about working on a website for one of the members. If you've ever been to one of these local meetup groups, when you're the tech guy, you're usually kind of the the hot commodity, right? Because these are these are people who have really nothing to do with tech. They're realtors, they're you know local business auto shops, they're bankers, etc. They really don't. They're not coders. They don't know much about technology. So when they get a tech person, they automatically assume that you can fix like every tech problem. So I always have people like, hey, can you look at my phone or my computer and that kind of thing. But oftentimes I'll also get people who approach me about working on a website for them. And so, again, my kind of gut nerd instinct when I was approached is to just kind of go full geek on them, right? To just go into all, to geek out and go into all the different, you know, things and technologies and so forth. But you always have to remember, you never go full geek, okay? If there's one thing you get from this, never go full geek. So I got about two sentences into my verbal nerd bomb, And I started to see their eyes glazing over and it reminded me that I was losing them. So I caught myself, I reined it back in and I got back to speaking English. So this is an example of something that I've said probably a hundred times. You've probably heard me say this time and time again, and that is clients do not understand or care about our nerd speak. They just don't get it. That's just a fact. So saying things like HTML, CSS, PHP, etc. 
to them, that's like saying Zaploot, Wawaru, and Epoof, right? It, it, <laughs> it's gibberish. It doesn't mean anything to them. They don't get it. They don't care. What they do care about is the end result that they're after. The membership site, the contact form, the sales page, the opt-in form, the business website, the e-commerce site. That is how they think. So, to the question, can you take clients only knowing HTML and CSS or JavaScript or PHP or MySQL or whatever? My answer is that's not the question to ask. The question to ask is, can you deliver a specific end result that people want? If yes, then you can take clients for that specific end result. And then you should market yourself appropriately. And this is the big thing that a mindset shift that I want you to get out of this is moving from a language mindset to a result mindset. Even if, I think even if you're trying to apply at a big tech company. Now, yes, those companies are probably going to have developers on staff, senior developers who do know code, who do know languages. And so you're going to see in the requirements for those jobs, we want you to know this language and so forth. And when you go through the interviews, they're going to have more tech related questions and so forth. And they're, they're going to look at that kind of stuff more than your average person because they actually understand it. But That's really only going to be in the hiring process and only a part of the hiring process. Once you get hired at a company like that, they're not going to care if you say that you know PHP or that you do know PHP. What they're going to care about is, are you delivering results through your work? That's what's going to matter to them ultimately. And even in the hiring process, you may say that you know HTML or PHP or CSS, what their, their ultimate answer to that in various different forms is going to be, okay, show me. And so you're going to have to show them some sort of end result, whether that's through a test or something that you've already built. So at the end of the day, no matter what approach you take or what you're going to do, it's about delivering end products, delivering results, not about what you know. Now, again, you and I know as developers, that in order to deliver the end result, we need to know the language. I understand that. But what I'm saying is when you market yourself, and that's what we're talking about here, when you market yourself, it should pretty much never be about what languages you know. It should be about what end results you can deliver, and then you should have proof of that, which is what your portfolio is. Your portfolio is proof that you can deliver this end result. That's why it doesn't matter if that portfolio is filled with projects that you did for clients. All that matters is, does it prove that you can deliver the specific end result that you say you can? And then that's why testimonials matter because that speaks to what you're like to work with. Okay, so I want you to make this shift from a language mindset to an end result mindset. Because ultimately, a freelance business or a tech business like this is really just a collection of services that you provide. You shouldn't, I I don't think there's ever a good time for you to market yourself as someone who can do everything. You'll make yourself miserable. You like make less money than you should. You should market yourself as someone who offers a very specific set of services. I generally would recommend three to five. So you could pick as one of your things, I build membership sites, or you could pick as one of your things, I build contact forms, or you could pick as one of your things, you know, I build whatever, I build local business websites, right? It's just a collection of services that you offer. So you can start with one, very simple one. Yes, that's going to limit how many clients you can get, how many clients want that specific thing and then that you can get as an end result. But that's fine. You start small with your business and then you grow it. You add more services as you learn more. And I highly recommend that you start smaller and 
get a feel for delivering for clients and getting those processes down really before you try to add a full slate of services. So it's actually better as someone who's new to offer, hey, I only do contact forms right now and get really good at delivering that, get your systems down, get your processes down, you know, get your marketing for that down, get all everything that goes around it down. And then once you have that down, now you can go, okay, I'm going to add a new service. And you have a lot better idea of, of what to do. You're in a place, you know, uh, uh, workload wise, you know, where you can add that service and take on that more of that work. Okay. So it takes some patience, but it's a much better way to build your business. And again, it's all about being results minded, not language, not a language mindset. Now, here's the crazier thing about all of this, kind of getting back to the question of, can I get clients if I only know X, Y, Z? Clients don't even really care how you deliver that end result. Not really. I mean, they may have some things here and there that, that, you know, they, they care about, but the majority of clients probably won't even have that. Now I said this a few podcast episodes ago, and I still believe it, but I believe that the future of site building, so e-commerce site, membership site, website, et cetera, the future of site building for people like you and me will be less about code and more about tools. So there will always be a place for coders. Don't get me wrong. And I think there will always be value in knowing how to code. But I think more and more the pure coders who really just want to dive headfirst into just coding, really kind of back end coding, but even the front end stuff a little bit. I think those pure coders who just love to code and they don't, they're not necessarily really care to care about the actual how something is used necessarily, they're going to migrate towards tool building. And we've, we've seen the growth of tools and, and web development type tools. And I'm not just talking about tools for us, things like WordPress, the, a lot of the page builder stuff that you're starting to see and so forth. Now, some of that stuff is not that great, but slowly some of that stuff is getting to be really, really good. So I think the peer coders will move towards tool building like that. And people like you and I who are more into putting the whole site together, we will migrate towards tool using. So we're going to use the tools that the coders, peer coders build. Again, there will always be value in knowing how to go in and hack up a tool yourself, right? Like WordPress. There will always be a value in knowing how to create your own plugin or to create your own theme, etc. But I, I do think more and more as we go along, you're going to see better and better tools created and there's going to be less and less value of coding everything from scratch. It's all, we're, we're kind of already at that place a little bit. It's just going to become more pronounced. So my point with this is it's likely that you don't even need to know HTML and CSS to get clients. You just need to know how to use certain tools to deliver that end result. As a matter of fact, I know some really successful developers who do really well, who do just that. They don't know how to code. They just know how to use the tools. Now, I'm not encouraging you to not learn how to code. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is what I'm pointing to is that in almost every case, you can probably start taking clients sooner than you think. You probably need to know less than you think in order to take clients. So don't let that be what holds you back. Can you deliver a, a specific end result? And it really doesn't matter how. You don't have to code it all from scratch yourself. You can use tools to do it. And if you can do that, then you can market yourself as being able to do that. And that's the key. Don't market yourself as knowing all these different languages when you don't. Market yourself as, I know how to deliver this specific end result. And then just tell people up front, and if you're going to use tools, these are the tools I use to do it. And if they don't want to have you use those tools, then they don't have to hire you. 
but most people aren't going to care. Now, speaking of tools, yesterday I just released another freelance template over on Patreon. And this one is for you and building your site. And it's based on my 12-step freelance profile template, which are the 12 steps that you need to go to when selling a particular service. Okay, if you haven't watched that video, go back a few videos, you'll see it. It's 12-step freelance profile template, I think is the exact name of the, the episode. Go back, listen, watch that. But it's based off that template and it uses WordPress and the layers theme. Again, tools. And there's no coding required in it. It's all pre-built for you. I've built the whole template for you. Put in all the text. So all you have to do is go in and change out what makes sense for the services you offer. Put in the, the portfolio stuff. But you don't have to worry about the layout, the, temp, the colors. I've made it look all nice for you. You just fill in the blanks. And you can get that as a supporting listener of the show over on Patreon at the freelance template level. So if you'd like that, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. If you like this episode, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of content. If you know somebody who'd benefit from hearing this, I'd appreciate if you'd share it with them. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening. We'll talk to you next time.